welcome everyone to Strange Species Season 2, Episode 26. I'm your host, Mike Davis, here with Ethne Davis, your other wonderful hostess with the mostest. Hello, hello. How in the world is everybody doing today? Uh, Post-Thanksgiving uh, hangover. I'm feeling fat. <laughs> like, just straight up fat. Yes. Uh, Probably really haven't like changed at all or look any different than I did prior. But man, I did a lot of eating and not a lot of uh, physical activity. But it was the best. It was great. Like, this weekend was the greatest. Yeah. We went to my parents' house, which means that Ethne and I do nothing, which we never do nothing. And so, but when I go to my parents' house, literally there's like nothing to do. In yeah. a good way? In a very good way. It's um, it's such a reprieve because, um, I mean, even though we're th- there and we, we help and we do whatever we can and our kids are still there, whatever, it's like um, we're so – it doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't care what we eat. I'll help prepare it. I'll – I mean, I'm just grateful – that I'm not having to think about it or be there or like be not be there, like be the one thinking about logistics. No logistics whatsoever. Sorry, just, that's a yawn. You just tell me like, I need you to cut this, put this here, move this here. I'm like, yes, I will do anything you tell me to do because I love it. Yeah. So my mom throws big uh Christmas party for the grandkids. And so we did that this weekend as well. Today's the 1st of December, so kind of kickstart the Christmas season. That was super fun. They're always so much fun. She uh, spends like six months prepping them. They're wild. She goes all out. Yeah, they're, wild. they're amazing. Truly amazing. And then we go out to eat at one of our favorite restaurants, the local place there in their hometown. Which is also fun. Yeah. So it's cool. The restaurant that we go to has been around for a long time. My grandpa who died at 97, still living by himself to the day he died, driving, all those kind of things. Uh, He would go there every single morning for breakfast. And, you know, he, he, my my grandma died, oh man, 45 years ago almost. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's been, he passed away about 10 years ago. So he had a good like 30 years of living on his own. So he would go out to breakfast with his bowling buddies and other friends and progressively, you know, they died off until he was the lone wolf. But I mean, didn't he have like a special spot? They knew him. He had his own maybe cup. They had his own mug Mug. that they would bring for him every day. And I mean, they knew him by name. And so when he passed away and when uh, we had his funeral, that's where we went to eat afterwards. But... In honor of Sir Ace. Yeah. So now we still, when we go back to town and have our Christmas party with my folks, that's where we go. Mm -hmm. It's a fun tradition. Yeah. My dad knows the owners and the people. And I think the owner back when my grandpa used to go had a young girl. Now she's one of the big wigs there and is married and has her own kid. You know, so it's just kind of this fun thing. That's cool. Yeah. It's good food. So it was really good. It was really, really good food. I had a uh, chicken fried steak and eggs, which is something that I normally try not to eat because, you know, of the, like, the plateful of death. <laughs> I always get it, Benny, usually. Yeah, but it was so good. Yeah, it was really fun. It was. You got to see a good friend. <sighs> oh. Spend lots and lots of time with, with Brie. Oh, so. yeah. Love spending time with Brie. Yep. So it was good. It was really Got good. To see cousins, and it was fun. And now, back at it. But because of that, I, uh, so normally I, I write our scripts throughout the week prior, obviously. Uh, but I only worked Monday and Tuesday last week, and then we were gone playing the whole time. So I didn't have time to write nothing. So we have a very uh, unique approach to today's episode. All right. Where there's no story. There's not really much of uh, anything. I'm going to need you to really be involved in your responses. And we're just going to okay. have a little dialogue. And this might be a quicker episode than normal because of that. Okay. Well, let's find out. But we're going to go over some of the weirdest um, world records today. Oh, that's fun. Okay. This is a book that one of our kids loves. Like Guinness Book of World Record kind of things. Yes. Yeah. Those kind of things, but all very like, hmm, 
Why is this even a record? <laughs> Who even got to this place right. of deciding that, or I mean, wanting to be this type of record holder? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some really cool records like sure. Fastest Marathon. Sure, that makes sense. For example, our first one we're going to talk about here. Most cockroaches eaten. Uh, what? Yeah. That's a real thing? So... And how do you know... <laughs> are you... De- obviously, this is deliberate. Yeah. So, the way that you have to approach this is in, in one minute. How many cockroaches can you eat in one minute? Are they alive? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to say yes for funsies. But it doesn't specify? Mm, I do not have that knowledge here. Oh, gross. So, this is held by Ken Edwards of the United Kingdom. How many cockroaches do you think he ate in one minute to hold said record? I mean, how long did it, would it take you to eat one cockroach? Let's say it's a living cockroach. Oh. <laughs> I ate a cockroach as a child once. Was it dead? No. I picked it up off the garage as it ran across, and I bit it in half. Did you know? No, I was a little guy. My mom was very not cool with this. Hmm. I only got half of it because she pulled the other half out of my mouth before I could mm. eat the whole thing. Um... Oh, this is so gross to even think about. I, I'm going to say like 10. So 10, that's 60 divided by 10, that would be one cockroach every six seconds, which would be pretty fast. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I've lived in Texas. I've lived in Honduras. I've lived in Belize. Um, I've lived in some places with some cockroaches. And generally speaking, the cockroaches I am familiar with are pretty big. Like, I don't know how well, many- that's what I'm wondering. But then you hear of those like hot dog eaters those guys are nuts and so i'm like well maybe this guy's kind of like a hot dog eater What's and he the can famous just guy joey chestnut I don't know. something chestnut that was like a japanese guy but there is a japanese guy as well you can like um maybe he could swallow the whole cockroach yeah, maybe at you one time chew. you just and yeah. so that you could do probably i like the noise faster i'm just so grossed out <laughs> like the concept is so gross so gross. the world record grows to me and I think all of our, our boys are going to want to try to beat these world records. Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> 36. Whoa. That's legit. So it's a little faster than one every two seconds. I don't even understand how. So you got to be just swallowing them. You have to be. But These poor little cockroaches swimming around in all your acids. Ew. Alive. Well, maybe they're already dead. That'd be. Yeah, maybe. It'd be a lot drier. Where do you get... I mean, so... There's probably, like, a cockroach farm. Right. But not dead ones. It'd be harder, I think, I find. You stick the little dead cotton ball of stuff in with a whole bunch of them. Yeah, it tastes real bad. I don't know what that stuff is, but... Is it formaldehyde? No. You can do it with just ammonia. Oh. You can gas them. Put them in a little container with a cotton ball of ammonia. Yeah. I had to do that once. I had to make a... But yours was unsuccessful. Mine was unsuccessful. <laughs> It was more of like a chloroform thing. I knocked it out, stabbed it, and then it woke up and was walking around with a pin stuck through its middle, going in circles, but not getting very far. <laughs> this is in seventh grade. That's sad. I had I was bug short for my project. I had to run out at lunch and find one in the field. That's sad. Yeah. And then he ended up living and he was... Well, not forever. But he did live the rest of the day. Going in circles? Which made it awkward to present. <laughs> I'm sure your teacher loved it. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Anyway, I, I don't know. I really don't know all the details of how you eat 36 of them, but no, it's but, too much. But, so if you want to go for the world record, you'll have to eat 37 in a minute. But I, I assume there's design. parameters. I assume it would have to be a certain size, a certain kind. There's probably lots of stipulations. Yeah. And, and like, you have to have proof, I'm assuming. So yeah, like you have to record have to, yourself or maybe record yourself. I don't know if you have to contact like the Guinness Book yeah, of World Records. And they send people? a representative out or oh, they wow. watch you on Zoom. I don't know how it works. Oh wow. I've never gone for I have a world record in nothing. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I so. wish I know that I'd I was be, married to someone that was a Guinness World be- record holder. I'm sorry. I know. In when I was in dental school, we thought about trying to do a world record of flossing. Not the dance, but like literal flossing. What would the record be? Adam and I. Remember Adam? Mm-hmm. We were going to try to do something with the Cleveland Indians baseball. And during this, so I had like a dental night. 
and get a sponsor from Colgate or someone like that and give out floss when people came in. Mm. And then during the seventh inning stretch, mm. have everybody floss and have, you know, like 35,000 people or whatever. Flossing at the same time? Correct. Would that have been a world record? I don't know. We never. Oh, why didn't you guys pursue this? Dental school sucks and we had a million other things to do and never got very far off the ground. Oh, it's a really good idea though. Yeah. That's really fun. I never even heard that. I don't think. Well, I was a busy guy. I didn't talk to you much then. <laughs> but you did have sleepovers with Adam. Well, only a couple. Yeah. On the road. Yeah. Not, road. Not, not in town. No. Mostly in Chicago. Yeah, mostly. A couple times, D.C. or Columbus. So, all right, here's another one, all right? Mm-hmm. And I, want, I want you to tell me which one you would rather set. Between the cockroaches and this one? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll tell you. This was the longest time being buried alive with insects. I just feel like these are not smart. I, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these, you're like, why in the world would somebody even the try to longest make this? time being buried alive with insects like crawling on you? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, but the world record holder lives in the Czech Republic. Okay, so is there a certain amount of time till you run out of air? Like, are you in a coffin? This person was in a coffin. Okay. But maybe with like a breathing apparatus, like some kind of filtration system or something because they were definitely in there longer than a coffin would have air okay and like longer than you would be dead yes okay yeah if 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 you didn't have some kind of air this person would be dead and become food for all of the insects crawling around okay with them in the so coffin. it's like a long time yeah i'm thinking of the boo box Ooh. yeah like the boo box okay um interesting fact did you know that the person that gets thrown in the boo box in hook is glenn close playing a man it's a cameo oh it's a woman yeah actually now that i think of the face it does kind of it's look totally like glenn. Glenn yeah, it is. why would glenn i don't know <laughs> okay um okay i'm gonna say oh insects crawling all around you and you're in the ground oh 69 67 minutes hmm, 10 days Wait, are you kidding? No, not kidding. You'd have to go. This would not be a good one for you if you think 67 minutes. Okay, okay, wait, wait. No food, no drinking, no peeing, no pooing. Like, what? I don't, I don't know how the setup was. How does this. I told you I have a lot of time to prep for this week. I was too busy watching football and basketball and eating. I know, but even. Okay, so. Shout out to my Kansas Jayhawks. Big win over Duke this week. Even if you don't know, even if you don't know the details, let's um, let's be hypothetical. Literally, how do you even? Hmm, and then you have bugs crawling all over you. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! I mean, technically insects. I was thinking an hour would be long, but then I was like, oh, like just go a little over an hour. By like seven or whatever minutes. And then there are 23 hours and then there are nine days. That is terrible. No, I wonder I would, what insects you choose. I would so much rather do the cockroaches for sure. I've had like dried insects before. I've got a vial of crickets I, downstairs. Yeah, but like living ones, if they had to be living, I, ugh, <laughs> I still would rather do that. I mean, I'd rather do it because it's one minute compared to 10 days, but it'd be a long minute. Okay, what about this one? Third one. Okay. Most worms eaten. Hmm. This one you only have to do 30 seconds. How many worms can you eat in 30 seconds? I just, this is so, like the now, texture. Worms would be easier because you can just slurp them, right? Oh, yeah. But the texture would be so nasty. It's true. This one's held by an American. Okay, I'm going to Mark s- Hogg. I'm going to say. Good last name. Um... 92. Mm, that was a good guess. 62. Ooh, so I went over. you could go for this one, yeah. No, no. That doesn't mean I could go for this one. This sounds easy to you. No. I I'm see. trying to get way up there because I was so far off on the other one. <laughs> so it was 62? Yeah. Gross. 62 worms, 30 seconds. Oh. So that's two a second. I mean, Timon and Pumbaa, they got it down. But like this is just, no. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, I don't want to do any of those. Okay, here's our next one, all right? Would you want to do this one? 
the next one. Are there any on here that you'd want to even try? Uh, I'd have no problem trying the next one. Okay. So the next one is the largest collection of belly button lint. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. The largest collection. Is this like in pounds? Weight? Like in kilogram? kilogram? I don't know what the measurement is. It's held by Graham Barker, an Mm -hmm. Australian. Um. Stores so, it in jars assorted by color. But I'm just trying to think like, okay, how are you, what is the measurement? Like I how much, know. if I'm guessing how much? Well, I don't need you to guess how much. Oh. I'm going to have you guess how long it has taken him to Oh, to create. be the world record. Right. Oh, it's, I see what you're saying. It's a different approach. Okay. Um, how long it has taken him to be the winner. Mm-hmm. So, but once you become the winner, then you just maintain your winningness. It's probably hard for someone to dethrone you. Yeah. Mm. For a uh, while, at least. Um, gosh, I'm going to say uh, seven years. 22 years of collecting lint. Does it say, did you ever notice like how much? Like where are no. you storing 22 years of belly button? Well, he stores it in jars. Yeah, but like how much is that? I don't know. Again, not a lot of time this week. To... So my dad. The he collect his? He has, growing up, I remember he had a good amount of belly button lint. Like stored? No. Oh. No, but I just think, well. He was a good collector of belly button lint. Yeah. Saying. Yeah. If And I don't know if all people are. Well, I think it helps. If you're hairy. If you're hairy, yep. And if you wear newer cotton clothes, I would assume. Right, because there's more fuzz. Right. So I wonder how much he, like, just trying to, I I don't really get belly button lint. So, like, if you're pulling you're it out so hairy. to really, like, look at it, how much that would be. I mean, wouldn't a whole jar take forever? I think so. Yeah. So I kind of am curious. I'm not very hairy either. So yeah, and I'm not you, the world's greatest. You get some. You get some. But it's. I, I'm not eligible for a world record. No. I wonder how hairy uh, Mr. Australian. He's from Australia, right? Yes. I wonder how. I assume it's a man. I, I thought you said his Graham. name. Graham. Graham. Um, I wonder uh, how much belly button lint he has. Yeah. That's something you can go Google. And how curious. hairy he is. Yeah. These are good things to Google. Right? All right, next one. Okay. Uh, longest fingernails. That's kind of a classic world record. Okay, I feel like I've seen this. Like, they curl. Yeah. They start to curl. They do. Get really, really curly and gross. Uh, And I feel like it's long. Yeah. Like. So, I will say. Three-ish meters. Three-ish meters would be nine feet-ish. So, the way they have it. Uh, recorded is as a combined length oh. between both hands. Oh, like every single one of them for a total length? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I, in my brain, it was each hand, but it could be. Like linear, total linear it's feet? It's totally total linear feet. So mm. it would be the answer divided by 10 per finger. Mm. So this is by Lee Redmond of the United States of America. So I was thinking like Length. nine foot... On one fingernail. Yeah. I, so well, then this if is you, a good question. I don't know what this well, is. Well, then if you take that and you times it by 10. That would be 90. 90 linear feet. 90 linear feet. So that says the world record is 28 combined feet. Hmm. But I'm not sure how that is. Because if it was per hand, then that would be 14 foot per hand. Right. Which seems, because they curl. Because I've yeah. seen them down to like people's feet, right? Like, right. No, that would seem more. So they're just adding up the total linear length of one hand and total linear length of the other hand. I don't know if hand. that's true or right. not. Right, and then that would be. That's the how I was. That's what you're. That's saying. what I was understanding it to be. Okay. But if it's per finger, then that's only like roughly two point eight feet per finger. That's not long. Which curl doesn't seem very long. Well, I swear I've seen like a picture and they right. like touch the ground. So yeah. That doesn't. That's not long enough. So. Either way, I don't know how you get there because you literally cannot function. Like, you can't do life. No. 
So how do you do life? Not well. I mean, really, though. How do you do anything? You Wipe your butt. That's what I was wondering about. He has a bidet. Or she. <laughs> it's a she. She has a bidet. Apparently. Or a servant or something. <laughs> well, that was a job. Well, it was. Back in the, the day. The of the stool. Yeah. But I'm not sure how many of those jobs still exist. Well, maybe if they're willing to win a Guinness Book of World Records, you make a lot of money for being a record holder. I highly doubt that. And then maybe you could pay a butt wiper. Maybe. <laughs> Don't you think that would be a great, a great job? No. It'd be a terrible job. <laughs> but, I mean, as a parent, well, essentially, you are that for the first, you know, yeah. couple years of your child's life. But I retired from that. Yeah. I got out of that game. Well, they retired you, really. No, even better. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to, like, you know, better ones. Like, most snails on one face. <laughs> okay. How is this better? I don't know. Oh, that sounds interesting to me. How many snails? So this would be, you know, important. Like you're trying to fit as many snails as you can How on their face. How many live snails can you stick on your face? Now, here's the question. What size are the snails? Mm -hmm. What size is your head? And what's defined as your face? Mm. You know, at what point do you? Yeah. Like just where your hairline is. Right. To a jawline. To... At the same time, though, I mean, snails move, right? It's true. So is this like this moving act? Not quickly, though. Like, a, no, they don't. But still, you like get them all on. <laughs> and then in the meantime, while you're trying to get all the other ones on, these guys slowly slide off your face. I mean, <laughs> the juggle is real. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to have a larger head. Okay. I'll give you an advantage at least. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing 41. Ooh, close. 43. Ooh, that's the closest they've been. Yeah. 43 snails, live snails, on your face at one time. Again, why that? You know, why not like, well, how many ants can I put on my face? How many worms? Like, why a snail? I have no idea. Yeah. The, there you go. The things that are in there. I mean, we could think of something to get in there. I'm certain. Hmm. It's kind of, some of them are Darwin Award-esque. Some are. Like, it's like, it's it maybe used to be real feats. And then now it kind of has evolved into this yeah. just weirdness. Speaking not of, Not everything, but. Speaking of feats. Mm. Feats as in F E A T S. Right. Okay. But I'm going to segue into F E E T S. Okay. What do you think the world record is for most feet smelled in a lifetime? In a whole lifetime? This one's kind of an interesting one because uh, this is held by Madeline Albrecht here in the good old US of A, who holds the record for most feet sniffed. In her whole life, though? Well, it's just the record's most feet sniffed. Now, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times I've sniffed feet on purpose. Can it be the same person's feet different times? Uh, sure. I don't know. Let's say no. Let's say let's say uh, unique feet. Different. This is the weirdest thing. I mean, who thinks of these things? Well, this one is one that I feel is kind of like what we just talked about. Like Darwin Awardy? Well, she realized like, oh, I bet no one's ever smelled more feet than I have because she worked in a industry testing foot odor products. Oh. And so then submitted and was like, oh, yeah, you win. Right. So in her career, she sniffed more than 5,600 pairs of stinky feet. Hmm. Which is probably true. I can't imagine someone smelling more stinky feet than that for any reason. Right. But it's not like but she set out to. Right. Break. It's, it's almost like they made a record. Job. Right. Yeah. Around it. Right. Around That's her cheating. Job. That is cheating. <sighs> but I, I can't. I hold a world record, maybe, looking out my office window. Mm. I don't know if anyone's ever looked out my office window more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, it's I kind possible. of want to be like, good well, actually, for that's you. That's probably not true. No one's probably ever looked out my office window while on the treadmill longer than I have. That's mm -hmm. almost guaranteed. Guaranteed. That is a record. No one else has ever done that more than me in the history of this world. 
So, I mean. And how does that make you feel? Pretty um, special? Pretty good right now, yeah. Yeah, you should submit your thing to the Guinness Book of World I should. Records. Yeah. Because this one, I mean, it's only because of her job. Yeah. Yeah. That maybe, she, maybe she has her job because she's got a freaky fetish and like smelling people's feet. Maybe. But. Anything's I, possible. It's possible. It's yeah. weird. It is weird. Okay. Okay, let's go back to more normal ones. <laughs> um, longest time with ants in one's mouth. That's more normal? Yeah. Again, how many ants? I don't know how this is quantified. This person, uh, Kanchana Tikwa from Thailand, held 3,400 ants in her mouth for two minutes. How? I don't know. 3,400? Yeah. I mean, ants are tiny, but at the same time. And active. That would be a tickle fest. Are they going? <laughs> it's a tickle fest. Yeah. Do you are get they disqualified going... if you actually swallow some? Yeah, that's what I mean. Are they crawling? Are they like chubby bunnies? You know, when you play that yeah. marshmallow game, they like ooze down your esophagus. That's probably what it and is. So when you pull ants. the wad out, it's like it's coming out of your whole throat. Are they allowed to have the ants crawl all the way down your esophagus? I'm not sure what the rules are. 3,400? Correct. This is sus. This one I don't believe. You don't believe because, that? Huh? No. 3,400 ants. That's a lot of ants. This one bugs me. I don't think it's possible at all. You have to Google it. See if you can find it. Okay, let's go with this one. Mm, what do you think the world record is for? The world record. In ounces of the most live maggots eaten in one sitting. Oh, sick. This is too far. I don't even want to think about it. The most live maggots eaten We'll say it one more time. In one sitting. Do people eat maggots? This guy like does. Dinner? Another Australian, so. But do they eat, like, is that a... No, I don't think anyone eats them for dinner. It, this doesn't seem like a lot to me, but maggots are very small and, well, so 2.7 ounces. 2.7 ounces is, let's see, 16 ounces in a pound, so four ounces is a quarter pound. So it's like... A little under a quarter pound of maggots. Now, how much do you think a maggot weighs? Like, phew, doesn't even register on a scale, probably. One sole maggot, you know? I'm curious how many maggots 2.7 ounces is. And in one sitting, I don't know what that means. Like, I can sit here as long as I want and take as long as I want? Or I have like five minutes to eat these? Can't you get really sick from eating maggots? I've never tried. I don't know. I mean, just in your mind. Doesn't that seem like something that can get you sick? I don't think a maggot in and of itself would. It's just a fly larva, right? Or, But normally they're in gross stuff. So assuming you were eating it out of like a rotten hamburger or something, sure, that would get you sick. But isolated in and of itself? I don't, I don't I would assume not. I'm still Any traumatized and I can see clearly in my mind the maggots eating the tiny baby turtles on the beach in Mexico years ago when the kids discovered turtles and they were so excited and then they realized when they flipped it over that it didn't make it to the ocean, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was so, they were so, like the little boys were so traumatized and I was so grossed out. I cannot imagine trying to eat one of those. What about 2.7 ounces of them? I mean, I, it, ugh. Ugh, she says. I just almost wonder, like, do these people have loved ones that care about them? Mm, doesn't sound like it. Because as a loved one, I would be like... So if I came home today and said, I want to set the world record for most maggots eaten at one time? I would, no, I wouldn't no, let you. No, I would be me. like, honey, if you ever want to, like, <laughs> kiss me again or snuggle me... No maggots, huh? There's no maggots for you. Okay. But, I don't know. I just seem like this is the weirdest thing. Okay. What about what about this next one? Okay. It's just going to keep getting worse. I don't know if they're worse or not. Most boogers pulled out in one minute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Out of your nose? Yeah. Well, I don't know where else you pull them out of. I don't know. You can like hock up a loogie. 
Like it's kind of like a booger. Yeah. I mean, similar. But no, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, so. <laughs> this is Ashrita <laughs> Furman from the US of A. Um, but wait, just time out before you before you answer. Mm-hmm. Are we how much are we weighing it? Are we is this like... um, it quantified? It's a number. How many boogers in one minute? Well, boogers vary drastically. This is true. There's Again, I'm not sure what the definition. Gummy boogers, dried boogers, all the, sorts of boogers. Okay, are. in how long? Um, in one minute. Oh. 28. 50. Again, I don't know how you... I mean, what if you took one and broke it into two? Ripped it in half. Does that count? Well, I would... I'm not de- sure how you quantify this. Yes, that's what I'm saying is like, I would deliberately make them tiny if they don't count them. And then yeah. I'm like breaking them but up still, inside my 50, nostril. 50, that's insane. It's a lot of boogers. <laughs> it's like a week and a half's worth. <laughs> It depends on what season. It's true. Depends on if you just had a cold or not. I mean, there's a lot of factors here. Give you a bloody nose. I'm trying to get them out, you know? Yeah. Anyways, that one kind of grosses me out. That uh, one's the worst so far for me. The boogers? Yeah. You're kidding. Me. Well, I mean, not to do. I'd rather pick my nose for a minute than eat maggots. And But just like talking about them, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, overeating maggots? Yeah. Okay. Correct. That's weird. All right. What about this one? Um, most tarantulas on you for one minute. Ooh. Mm. Have a sip of your water. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. It's got like lemon or something in there. It does have lemon in there. Oh, I'm going to say... Fifty-three. I feel good about fifty-three. Fifty-three is a good guess. One hundred twenty-five. Oh, I'm so off. This one wouldn't bother me that much. Tarantulas. I hate spiders. Tarantulas don't bother me though. Oh, it would still bug me. Mm-hmm. They still bite you. Yeah, I mean they can, but they normally don't. Yeah, I, still I ran don't... into I've ran into a fair amount of tarantulas in the in the wild in Central America, and they always freak the crap out of me because they scare me. But not because of like the spider itself. Like you grab your towel and there's a tarantula in it. You're like, oh, sweet googly moogly. But then he scurries off and you're fine. But the ones that look like Skeletor, they're like six inches wide. Those are freaky. I, I honestly think that they are equally just as gross. Like the squirmy, wormy, crawly all over my skinness. It doesn't matter. It would be disgusting. Whether I knew it could bite me or not. Again, if I see a spider, if the spider's in my house, I don't freak out about him. They don't bug me. I'm, I'm talking just laying down and letting them crawl all over me. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, spiders bother me way more than any other creature. Like really? rats don't, snakes, like none of those things oh, bother I guess me. Those don't really bother me. But w- spiders are gross. They, they are, but like out. if they're from a distance, they don't bother me. No, like when out of the chicken coop, those big giant ones. Ugh. Oh, but you're so or, fascinated by watching them in their webs. Yeah, it's true. And like if they're actually getting prey. Or like those crazy ones in Japan. Yeah. Those big yellow things. Yeah. Freaky, man. But could you have imagined them, any of them? It doesn't matter what kind. It's, I mean, a tarantula is still a spider. No, that's what I'm saying. So those things on me, would, well, I'd hate it. But tarantulas are like squirrels to me. Because they're like fuzzy and big. I don't know. They don't seem like they. they a squirrel is way cuter. They, I mean, they are. But they lose their terrifyingness when they become fuzzy and big. Uh, you realize you're saying the word big. I know, but there's just, I don't know. They don't bother me. Mm. Where like. I'm very different. Any spider. It doesn't matter if it's a anything. Yeah. Whether it can bite me or not. It's going to creep me out if I'm laying on down, letting it crawl all over me. Well, Marv from the Wet Bandits. He didn't like him either. Yeah. Especially on my face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's an interesting one. Farthest distance squirting milk from your eye. I literally don't even know what that means. Some people can 
shoot milk through their tear ducts. Like cow's milk? Or like a human milk kind of thing like that is naturally in your eyeball? I don't know. I'm very perplexed. Like if you could see my face, you would see that I'm very confused by what you're saying. I feel like I've seen this before, but now that you're asking me questions. You've seen this happen? I think I've seen people, yeah. Squirting milk out of their eyeball? Yeah. People listening, have you seen this? Do you know what we're talking about? Apparently we don't know what we're talking about. Okay, so the distance is your question? Mm-hmm. Squirting milk out of your eyeball. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. This okay. one's from Turkey. Uh, Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. I'm going to, here, while you're pontificating to yourself over there. I want to look this up. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, three. I'm going to say 36 inches. Solid three feet, huh? Well, over three feet. No, if it's 36 inches, that's exactly three feet. Oh, well, I was thinking of three feet plus six inches, but I forgot. We don't work in metric system. <laughs> Um, so 36 is three exactly. 36 plus six is 43. Is what I want to be saying. No, 42. 42 to 43. Dude, these pictures are nuts. Inches. I'm not sure what's happening here. Look at these guys. But how are they getting the milk into their eyeballs? This is the part I am so confused by. Hmm. Why does water squirt out of your eye if you blow your nose really hard? Interesting. Water or milk? Some people can squirt water or even milk or smoke from their eyes. But how come one spurt unusual fluids from their eyes is dangerous or to their health? Uh, so if you're shooting water from your eye, you're putting pressure on the sac and the bridge of the nose that holds fluids draining from the eyes. This is called the lacrimal sac, and it's part of the tear duct system. I could have told you all of that. I mean, the <laughs> lacrimal sac and the tear duct system. Essentially the drainage system for the eyes' is tears. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Normally that would go down your throat. Yeah. But with pressure, some people may be able to squeeze or squirt out fluids from the sac or duct. May even make a high-pitched sound. Hmm. I still the so the milk they're deliberately getting milk that they've so drunk in into their eyeball somehow. So mm -hmm. oh, oh dang it. Either way, I still think So one of the more common ways to put pressure on the nasal cavity is to perform a valsalva maneuver, which we use in dentistry, mm -hmm. to check for after an extraction if you have a tear Perf in your sinus. Yeah. Sinus. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I, this isn't answering me any of the Well, how but I'm just saying 42 in inches. Eyes. Anyways, uh, nine feet, two inches. Whoa, I was so off. The one I've been the closest to was the one with the 51 and the 53. I don't remember what it was, but that was the closest one. 41, 43. Oh. I think. What I, was that one? I don't know, but that's the one I was closest on. I've no. been so far off on a lot of them. Okay, all a person needs to do is get the milk into his nasal cavity by breathing. Holds it there without breathing out. Pressure builds inside the nose because the milk can't escape out of it or mouth. The liquid has to go somewhere, so it squirts out the eye. This is the grossest thing ever. Interesting. One time I drank orange juice, and yeah. then I started laughing, and it shot out my nose, and it burned really bad. And I was at the school cafeteria, and everyone laughed at me. So I guess if you wouldn't have let it go out your nose, maybe it would have shot your eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what happened. It just all happened so yeah. fast. But I remember that happening in baseball. And then my eyes watered. In the dugout ones with Blue Powerade. Ooh, gross. There's Blue Powerade. But I boogers. actually probably wouldn't burn as bad as maybe orange juice. Anyway. No, no. Well, orange however one discovers this skill, I have never known anyone to be no. able to do it. Gleeking is basically like the cool... eye gleeking. Yeah, but it's like basically the coolest skill. You'd be that shocked how often... People gleek while in the dental chair. Oh, I, yeah, well, they do a lot. Well, you wouldn't be, but people listening would be. Yeah, they do a lot because your tongue and... Yeah. Um, okay, this one's pretty cool. Um, largest scab collection. Ew. 
personal or can you like collect your neighbor's scabs? I think you can get anybody's. <laughs> I have one right now I can donate. Mm. I got a nice cut on my arm from playing basketball. My m- Nice. Yeah. yeah. My mom used to say you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Yes. But, but so you can pick their scabs. You can pick their scabs and keep them. So that um, you can win a Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know how big the scab collection is, so you have to look this up. His name is David Manley from the United uh, the United Kingdom, and he's been collecting scabs and jars for years and years and years. So that sounds gross and really disgusting. I probably won't ever Google that, but if you want to, you can Google that. Okay, so it's per number, not per size, or per weight? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Okay. No one should know. <laughs> so gross yeah people are so in- interesting like <laughs> what would possess one to want to even start a collection like that ever i have no idea they must be fascinated by it yeah okay okay uh this next one i feel like would be good for you for me yeah mm. um pimple popping it's right up there with that most mayonnaise eaten in three minutes. How is that remotely related to pimple popping? Well, it's not, other than they're both white, gushy substances. Oh, sick. Mayonnaise in how long? Three minutes. Why? Who? So could I be the world record for one minute and not three? I don't know if one minute is a world record or if the category is three minutes. I don't, this is what I'm saying. I don't know why these things. <laughs> why not four minutes or two or five? Who knows? Okay, so okay, preface it again. The most mayonnaise, mayonnaise eaten, eaten in, in three, three minutes. minutes. Oh, eating mayonnaise just straight plain would be so gross. Would not be awesome. Okay, three minutes. Two cups. The correct answer is three and a half jars. Oh, gross. But again, I don't know how big these jars are. Well, it's bigger than two cups no it's matter definitely, what. I mean, each jar is bigger than two cups. I am so bad at these. Well, like, I'm so far better. off. I kind of feel like we need to reverse roles when you do a script like this. <laughs> That's true. You're more than welcome to write a script anytime you want. Well, I could do a script like this, I feel like. Yeah, anyone could. That's why it took me three minutes. <laughs> I just had to go find... All these Guinness, but you still have to siphon through which ones you wanted to pick and which one you wanted to talk yeah. about. And I asked AI to do it all for me, and then I just picked the ones I wanted. There was I had no time, but I wanted something to talk about. I think these would be good because you could talk about them. Yeah, um, I would be I would vomit from that much oh, mayonnaise. I bet that person vomited. Yeah, that's so gross. That's real gross. I like mayo. Yeah, I mean I like mayo for surely, but it's always. Mixed in something that I don't really know. Like, it doesn't... I don't ever like mayo to ever eat it plain. Ever. Well, no. Yeah, it sounds terrible. Right? Yeah. So. Better than Miracle Whip, though. Well, sure. Anything, really. Japanese um, Kewpie. <laughs> How about most cow brains eaten in 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even know anymore. This one's out of Japan. Okay. Oh, cow brains. Are they cooked or are they raw? I have no idea how you eat a cow brain. All I know is it sounds like you could slurp it. Why does it sound that way? I don't know. I feel like brains have a gelatinous texture to them. But if you cook them, maybe not. Maybe not if you cook them. That's true. How much cow brains in one minute? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Oh, gosh. How many cows and are we, do are we, to kill? Are we talking about... Like one brain, two brain? Are we talking about weight? Uh, pounds. 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 Pounds of cow brain in 15 minutes. Okay. Um, I don't really know the weight of a brain. I feel like I'd have a hard time eating this amount of pounds of anything in 15 minutes. Um. Okay. 33. Ooh. 17.7. Oh, okay. So, like, again, you'd be going for you because this apparently sounds easy. <laughs> it doesn't easy. I'm just always way under, so now I was trying to go way over, obviously. Obviously. 17 and a half pounds of cow brain in 15 minutes. Sounds icky. 
Well, I'm just thinking, okay, so like a quarter pounder and a whole pound of ground beef. I was just trying to picture ground beef. And then I was like, but it would be lighter, I would guess, and a little bit s- softer to eat. So that's why I was like, I don't know, just 15 minutes. I don't know. I was really going up there. I was trying to make an educated guess, but it didn't work so good. Yeah. Okay. I've got two more for you and okay. one honorable mention. Okay. The honorable mention is because, again, this is one of those really stupid runs where I'm like, why are we picking this time interval and this amount? It seems very random. But it would just be fascinating. This one's out of Germany. Somebody. So the record says longest time with spiders in mouth. But, I mean, I assume you could put a spider in your mouth for a long time. But this guy did 30 seconds with 20 live spiders in his mouth. And they all have to be living when you take them out after? Yeah, I'm not sure what the... But I can't imagine they would be happy about that. I don't think spiders like wet. No. I think his face says no. Just, how does one get to the point where they're like, I want to try putting a spider in my mouth. Are you just that bored? Maybe. Maybe. Huh. I don't know. And it would crawl around and give you the heebie-jeebies, would it not? Well, 20 of them would crawl around. Even one. I mean, one would. 20 would 20 times that. I mean, that's a lot of legs. Yeah. That's like 8 times 20 legs. Yes, which I believe is... A lot. 160? I don't know, but it's a lot. 8 times 20? Is that right? Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's too many. It is. Well, yeah, eight's too many. Ugh. In general, I can't think of any legs that I would want in entirety in my mouth. <laughs> Not crab legs? Mm, not the whole thing. You just want the meat from the inside? I don't, I don't really even particularly like crab meat, but sure, that would be fine. Frog legs? That's the only thing I think. Maybe a frog leg. But again, I want the whole leg. Right, because they just eat the tiny little meat off yeah. of it. I just want a thigh. Maybe a hammy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't particularly eat a lot of frog legs. They should do centipedes. What? Do what with them? In the mouth? But like how many legs of centipedes are in your mouth? It would definitely seem much worse. Yeah. So that's, that's good. All right. Here's our last two. All right. Okay. Largest ball of chewed gum. Like in someone's mouth or just nope. ever? Just a collection. You know? Oh, of like you have like a gum, yep. you make a ball. Big ball. I'm like picturing the ball the size of the one in Indiana Jones that rolls in the booby <laughs> trap. It might be that big. I don't know. Is it about weight or is it a diameter that they pieces could of gum and weight? Oh, pieces of gum and weight. And mm. I would be curious to look this one up and see what this looks like. Okay, I'm gonna guess one thousand two hundred twenty six pieces of gum. 1,026 pieces of gum. Uh, so the real one weighs 175 pounds, okay. and it is over 95,000 pieces of gum. I am so off. Like, so off. So off. <laughs> I have zero point of reference, though, too. Well, there isn't a lot of life experience that gives you a point of reference for giant Wads balls of, of chewed, chewed gum. gum. Yeah. So don't I have that. seen the cool... Um, What's the wall in Seattle? Chewed gum wall. But does it have a better name than that? I think I can think of. It's like a whole walkway in this cool little part that everyone's put their chewed gum on and like it's You should Google it. Yeah. It's you amazingly really, disgusting. It is amazingly disgusting. You know what a patient told me the other day is they cleaned that in twenty in twenty twenty. That's all in the last four years. Oh really? That's been redone. It was like that before? Mm-hmm. They clean the whole thing yeah. off. How do you even clean that? I don't know. And I don't know if that's true or not. That's what I was told. Either way, this is it's an alleyway under Pike Street Market in Seattle. It's probably I don't know. Not very big. But 30, like 30, 40 yards, mm-hmm. both sides. But I mean super high. Like it's gum on gum on gum on gum. Everywhere. Yeah. Like it's so gross to even like try to add to it because you don't even want to get like close enough to touch it. <laughs> yeah, we did add to it. Oh, totally. Yeah. And we kids took pictures cool. and stuff. The kids thought it was cool. But yeah, so 
How many pieces of gum did you say? 95,000? Over 95,000. Over 95,000. And how many pounds? 175. 100. Oh, my wordy word. Where do you store this piece of gum? Or this ball of... I have no idea. ABC gum. Hopefully in your living room. Oh, yes. The centerpiece. Mm. I really do want to see this piece yeah, of gum. Yeah, just look that up. Like in your, you build a shop. Yeah. This is my pre-chewed gum. You better have it on some kind of rotating pedestal. Yeah. Otherwise, it's really lopsided. <laughs> yeah. Just so you can, you know, get all the angles. And all the different colors, too. Yeah. I wonder what the, I wonder what the most common gum. Flavor. Or like brand is, you oh. know, it's like, oh, he's a bubblicious guy. the question guy. is, does it have to be chewed by the same person or can it be gum? Like you just send out. Like a block party. Hey, we're going to have a gum <laughs> chewing to it. block party and add to my gum. We'll have to look it up. Ball. We're going to go hot tub in a little bit. We'll look it up in the hot tub. Okay, let's do it. Sounds good. All right, last one. Most rotten eggs eaten in one minute. Can you eat rotten eggs and not get sick? Well, I think that's part of the trick. You start <laughs> violently throwing up halfway through it. I mean, it happened to your brother. Yeah, it's true. They weren't rotten. They were just normal. He's yeah, they just, were just deviled. Yeah. He's just allergic. Yeah. Um, the most rotten... <laughs> this is the craziest thing. The most it's rotten... It's not that many. The most rotten eggs... Raw, whole, rotten eggs. Oh, whole? Like you're eating the shell? I don't know with the shell, but I mean, like it's it's not like... Do you know how bad a rotten egg smells? Um... Like with our chickens, we I know the smell of rotten egg. They are rank. Well, how many could you eat in, th- in one minute? None. Zero. <laughs> the answer is zero. I, I can't even be in the same room as it. Um, I don't know. Seven. Three. German guy. Why? I dropped my pen. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Because you want to be in a book and have people on a podcast talk about how crazy you are. But I didn't even tell his name. So you don't even get any credit for it. Well, he's from Germany. You just can't say his name, probably. Andre Ortoff or oh. something like that. Oh, maybe it's like more normal to eat rotten eggs there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I like pickled eggs. Yeah, those aren't rotten. Very not rotten. I don't know. I just want to stick with my like, I don't know. Eggs Benedict. Yeah, just my normal records. You love Eggs Benedict. Like, maybe I could get the record for, like, the most time spent doing yard work. That sounds like a really hard one. (laughs) There's a lot of people that do a lot of yard work. (laughs) I was just kidding. There's a lot of landscapers that that's all they do, like, every day, all day, so. Right. I don't know. I don't know either. But rotten eggs sounds terrible. It sounds so gross. Yeah. Like, just the smell of them. Mm. Like, I'd almost want to keep them in the shell so I couldn't smell them. Just like crunch it down my throat, man. And that texture would not be good either. No, it wouldn't. And how do you not vomit? Yeah, that's that's the, the real trick. That's the that's the magical gift right there. Or maybe the person did vomit after three, and then so that's why they could only hold them in for... Or maybe they like ate one. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they ate seven, but threw up four. Oh. I can't think about it. I think that's worse than like. <laughs> that's the worst one. Honestly. Cockroaches. Oh yeah, I'd much rather eat a minute of cockroaches than a minute of raw eggs. But those are raw rotten eggs. That's yeah. That's a very big difference. Yeah. Raw rotten eggs. Yeah. So nasty. That's the worst of all of them. Um, if you guys know of anyone who has the potential to be a Guinness world record holder for their weird or y- unusual skill, I guess you might say. I don't know if these are skills. Well, <laughs> you should let us know. I don't know. Laying there with snails on your face isn't much of a skill. Yeah, I mean, there is a skill. <laughs> because but I guess eating rotten raw eggs is a skill. You might have to train My your stomach body. could not do it. Yeah, exactly. Putting uh, chewed gum into a ball, I have that skill. I can do that. I can do that. I, wouldn't I want can collect that. belly button lint. Physically, I have that skill. You physically have the skill, but I have... Do I have the will, the yes, determination, yes. though, to be a champion? Exactly. No, definitely not. Not for those things. Nope. No. Or much of anything else. No. But I bet you Lincoln would want to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for, like, the most pieces of Lego put together. He would love that. Yeah. 
He would love that challenge. I can't afford that challenge. <laughs> this is a true statement. We have many, many, many Legos. I'm sitting here. There's a Lego to my left. I'm looking at two sets across from me. <laughs> there's another one in a box up there. Yeah. A lot of Lego around here. There is a lot of Lego. Around but I like Lego too. Yeah, they're super fun. Yeah. So, all righty, everybody. Um, we will be back next week. Have well, a great we will have an episode, and then we'll see from there where we're at. Probably one more, potentially. Maybe two more. We'll see before we take a before couple weeks holidays. off for the holidays. So. Have a wonderful night, everybody, or day, or whatever time it is. It's birthday week. It is my birthday this week. I turned the big 4-0. It's going to be an old man. <sighs> feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, and we will, uh, yeah, we'll uh, chat with everyone next week. So have a wonderful week, and we will see you later. Thank you, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>